Hi, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV, and we have with us today a woman we've just been cracking up laughing. Turns out we are from the same hometown of Centralia, Illinois. <laughs> Ladies what and are the gentlemen, chances? we are one of the chances, really. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Evanston Live TV. We have Pretty Namani. Thank you so much, Malika. I appreciate you having me. Yes, thank you for coming on. Um, my mom was telling me all about you and you have this mission. Well, actually you've been reaching out wanting to help. Like what can you do to help, especially during this time period to help uh, black entrepreneurs in yes. Evanston, in town. And um, I thought that that was fabulous. I mean, if I had, if I had the money, I would be just dishing it out to to one well to everyone but definitely helping the black community and black entrepreneurs because i'm an entrepreneur so i know how hard it is the hustle is very hard Absolutely. um but girl please tell us all about this what what is it that you're wanting to do um and then we'll talk about how people can get in contact with you because i know you're looking for the black business owners in evanston yes so uh i moved out to the north shore area about a year ago and I, I would love to try and create some way for folks around here who are trying to understand their roles as allies beyond just performative allyship where, or optical allyship where they're putting up posts and things like that. I'd like, to, you know, I'd like for people to start putting their money where their mouth is and myself included. And so I think the first step is creating you know, a directory where we can make sure that we're disseminating it throughout the North Shore and the suburbs where people know the incredible Black-owned businesses that we have and how we can support them. I know, especially with the COVID pandemic, um, I know your mother was telling me that some of the businesses have been hit pretty hard um, in Evanston and, um, and have GoFundMe pages. And so I just love to see how I can support them, what we can do, put together um, you know, something creative, as well as just putting the information out and getting getting as many people aware of of the diversity in terms of business businesses that we have i'm i think that that supporting small businesses is the fabric of our communities and so it's so important for us to just to do the work in addition to self-educating but also to do the work in terms of knowing who's in our community and supporting them beyond just just chatter online which is great but you know i'm, I'm a big believer in action me and you both, yes, big believer in action. And I really appreciate um, this vision that you have and, and you have been reaching out too. Um, the, the thing here in Evanston, and wait, where, where are you exactly? I'm in Glenview. You're in Glenview. So here in Evanston, we have a gazillion nonprofit organizations. Like, God damn it, it's like <laughs> a lot of them are you know, kind of the same, whereas, you know, y'all couldn't just join forces, like you had to go start yours across the street. So now you have all these nonprofits, like there's a fundraiser every time you look up. And, um, which is great, which speaks to Evanston because people want to help, they have a cause, they have a mission, but it's just so many of them. And then you have those who come to Evanston or, or from Evanston, who are looking to thrive as business owners. So then you have this, well, we offer it for free. Well, I'm, this is my business. <laughs> so, you know, you have that going on. Absolutely. And then Evanston is quick to pour money into the nonprofits. Um, but those who, especially black people who are trying to get a business off the ground, it becomes very, very uh, challenging. And then, you know, all the grants that they offer here in Evanston can be very intimidating. Very, very intimidating. Um, and you know, I don't care what color you are starting a business, you're gonna cut some corners, you're gonna do whatever you got to do to get that business going. And then so for these grants and loans, they want a breakdown of all this information that 
you can't really provide, so you don't meet the point system to get approved. And so the same people get the money over and over and over. So that's, I'm letting you know, that's the situation in Evanston. Um, I don't know what it's looking like in Glenview. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's, what's going on in Glenview. The demographics here are very different than Evanston. Um, but I do know as, as a business owner that this pandemic has affected um, my clients. I, I do business law work and my clients have been those who are trying to get their feet, feet on the ground and starting new businesses have been stopped in their tracks. And it's hard enough, I think, um, for a person of color to start a business and create a client base and create that goodwill within the community. And then this happens where you don't get to get out and make relationships with other people. The, COVID, the pandemic happens and you don't get to get out and create those relationships that you would otherwise. And you know, I, I agree with you. I think there's a lot of um, red tape. I know a lot of small business owners who have been left out of the conversation in terms of getting the funding they need to get back on track with the pandemic. And mm -hmm. I'm not surprised to hear that black owned businesses are suffering the brunt of that. Yes, yes they are. I mean, you have some organizations like Lind. I mean, they, um, they've really gone the extra mile for uh, black owned businesses really trying to um, help them because they recognize, you know, you know, the same organizations people are getting the money but there's so many others out there and i know um you were asking for a list and i was like you know what it might be better if we just do an interview and let them tell you that they're out here you know um, um, yeah yeah because a lot of them don't have the promotion you know we don't even know that they're there and i want lift them up and make them visible because I just think that we all should know about these businesses. And regardless of what's going on now, we should have known about these businesses years ago. But I think if, if we wanna be allies, if we want to actually be in this fight to make lives better for our black brothers and sisters, we have to really lift up black owned businesses and put them front and center um, in terms of who we're supporting and how we're, how we're lifting our communities up um, who are recovering from the pandemic. Mm. Do you think, um, I'm gonna ask you some, some, some questions here. Do you think, do you see it as a form of racism? Because you know, a lot of people are like, oh no, I'm not racist. But they don't see, um, like say a, a young black man starts, he's an entrepreneur starting a business and then this white person across the street is like, oh, I can do that, I'm gonna do that and then they'll turn it into a 501c3 and darn near name it the same as the young black man over here across the street because that white person knows guess what all the money is going to come to me and so this young black man is pretty much having to close his doors isn't that the story of america <laughs> 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 Isn't that the story of America, white people profiting on the work of black people? I mm. mean, isn't that the tr truth? I, I hear this from so many of my friends. I have a, a, a friend who I was talking with yesterday and she's a black business owner and it's exactly, she told me exactly that story. <laughs> and isn't that the truth? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, how enough is enough. I mean, we can't keep the black community cannot keep supporting the business endeavors of the white community. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if you put it the other way around, it would be outrage across the board. But why is it okay for, for black business owners to do all the hard work and then someone to come in and scoop it up and say, oh, well, I'm a white savior. You know, everyone give me your accol accolades and your profits. I, I just, sorry, I, I don't mean to, to be so blunt, I just, that's exactly, that's what our country has been doing for 400 plus years. Mm, mm. Yeah, but they don't see that as racism, as a form of racism. It's absolutely racism. And I, it's absolutely racism. And it's when, you know, a, when you see two businesses that are one's owned by a black person and one's owned by a white person, you, 
it has to come into your, I, I don't think that people realize that they're making this decision based on implicit bias when they're picking a wine, white owned business. And I think it's really important that we adjust that mindset to be more intentional about where we're putting our money. Um, personally, I don't, I prefer to support businesses owned by people of color. I just, and I, that's just my, my mentality. But I think if everyone was a little more intentional about where they're putting their buying power, we could really make the, the space of entrepreneurship a more equal space. And also make, make sure that we're giving businesses um, fairness when it comes to equity going into to the market as a mm. new business owner. Mm. Well, I thank you for recognizing that. I don't really have this sort of conversation um, with any, I should say this is really the first time I've had it publicly on my show here. Usually it's like kitchen table, as Wendy Williams would say, kitchen table conversation that you can't really have out there because then, you know, you get persecuted for calling something like that out. Um, but I will tell you, when I had moved back to Evanston from LA um, about six years ago, and I was thinking of starting this program because I saw we needed it, <laughs> one of the aldermen, and I won't say who it was, um, one of the aldermen has said, Malika, if this is something you want to do, I suggest you turn it into a 501c3 now. Start, you know, put in your, your uh, paperwork for a 501c3 now. And I was like, why? It's, I'm starting a business. Why, why would I turn it into a 501c3? That means I got to do fundraisers and, you know, why can't people just see the value and pay for the service like they would do any production company? He was like, trust me, in Evanston, you need a 501c3. Otherwise, you know, somebody similar is going to come by and they're going to do the same thing and they're going to start a 501c3 and you are going to struggle. And boy, if that alderman wasn't telling me the god darn truth, and I had to learn the hard way, and I really wished I had listened. I mean, I still don't want to be a 501c3. I think 501c3 should definitely be for saving um, people like really in hardship that are in need, you know. And what I do is is media, and though it's promoting people, products, and brands, and it's helping business owners, I do the best I can. You know, um, I, I didn't think I should profit um, in terms of a nonprofit off of, um, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, setting up a not for profit's not easy. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, it's intentionally difficult when it comes to the legal stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, you would need to have a not-for-profit and go through the expense and the headache of setting something up when you just want to operate a business that does good work for the community. Right. I mean, that shouldn't mean that you're a charity. That should mean that you're a socially purposeful business. <laughs> Thank you, pretty. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know. It's, <laughs> if, if you were a white, white media person doing this, showcasing, I don't know, white businesses intentionally, would someone say to you, you should be a 501c3? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, the main ones in town, like Evanston Now, Roundtable, Tribune, um, I mean, they get checks. So I don't believe that they're a 501c3. I'm pretty sure they are for profit. Uh, but the community writes them checks left and right. Um, but you know, it, it, it is what it is, but I know once people see this video, we're going to learn about so many other black entrepreneurs in town that we didn't even know was trying to function. We didn't even know was trying to function. Um, I mean, we have some great success stories in town, uh, Jennifer Zedable, CNW, uh, good to go, uh, yo fresh um the jerk pit and those are all restaurants um but i know that there's there's a lot of uh entrepreneurs out there 
Are you writing those businesses down? <laughs> I am. I am writing them all down. That's there's there's so many more out there, and um, and they're having to learn the hard way, you know how how Evanston uh, operates, and even with the money that Evanston got from the federal government. I mean, that money went to the homeless. And I'm like, well, what about everybody in the middle here that's really hit by COVID-19 and losing their, their home? They haven't been able to pay their mortgage, their rent, um, the businesses paying on their, their leases. Um, I mean, it's, oh my gosh. So, I mean, so having a business is having a baby, you know, <laughs> and you have, to, you have to take care of that business like you would a child. And you know, if you're not getting the, the financial assistance you need to continue to provide for that child, what are you doing? You know, I mean, how, I mean, it's so hard as a business owner, as a fellow business owner. I mean, if you aren't getting the support you need because you're not fitting into someone's application, it makes it really difficult to continue providing the service you provide. Yes, yes, yes. So pretty, give us a little bit more about your, your background. So you're this amazing woman with a heart and you get it you see what's going on you get it and you're right. about action you clearly are about action yes. so tell us a little bit more about who is who is pretty namani that's trying to make this happen for the black community um well <laughs> I'm, I'm just a human honestly like uh, i'm just i'm just a, a human like i I don't know how any human with a conscience is okay with what's happening to the black community today. Um, and so, well, so for me, I, I'm a lawyer. Um, so uh, I went to Northern Illinois for law school. Actually, you recently interviewed one of my classmates, uh, Janita Shambi. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh. Um, and she, she's amazing. And I was so excited to see that um, online actually before I met your mom. And so a uh, small world. And so I, uh, I do transactional work. So I have my own firm, uh, Nimani Law, where I do um, business law, commercial and residential real estate, and estate planning. I like to help people and families um, and businesses. I'm also very passionate about working with business women of color. So I have a blog called The Boss Ladies Lawyer, where I work with um, female um, business owners on setting up their businesses and, and essentially being a not a partner but a sponsor um, for them throughout the process so making sure that they have someone they can call when they have questions and they're not getting charged for every single phone call they make to their lawyer it's about making legal assistance accessible to to businesses owned and run by women of color to really give them the support they need um, from a legal end without worrying about all the billables that go into that. Um, so that's kind of, and I live in Glenview with my 85 pound dog. Who's, um, and that's, that's my story. I, um, I had the privilege of being able to help a young man in Glenview organize a protest here yesterday mm. for the movement. Um, and that was really a beautiful experience um, because it was a, uh, a black led protest, um, which was important to me to see um, that we were being led in this movement by a black voice. And this young man is 21 years old and he just inspired me and it was, it was a beautiful thing. And um, we're also working on um, yard signs for folks and allies to really outwardly put, put on their front lawn. I am with the movement and we stand in unity with our black community. And the proceeds are going to a black owned print shop that's done the artwork and the signs and then anything above that will go to um, my block my hood my city and so and then the last piece that i would really love to do is figure out some way to to support black owned businesses in the north shore but also make it fun you know fun for them fun for whoever is enjoying products or the you know getting to know these businesses and trying to figure out some way to really bring us all together and um, start talking to one another about who we are and and where we come from instead of just keeping with ourselves. And I could have said that more artfully, but <laughs> but it is right. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. I appreciate um, people with vision and more than a vision, they're acting on it. 
Um, so how can people get in touch with you? You know, people are going to be like, oh, what is her number? <laughs> well, I would, I would encourage anyone to call me if they're interested in, in, you know, in letting me help amplify their business in terms of getting the word out about them. Um, they can email me. Uh, my email is uh, Preeti, so P-R-I-T-I at nimanilaw.com, so it's N-E-M-A-N-I law.com, or they can call my office um, at any time at 312-646-4434, and, um, and we'll be sure to figure out, we're starting to really try and mobilize for sustainability of the movement. This isn't a trend. We want this to stick, so we, I want, the, you know, I want this to stick, and so we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that um, that we really lift up our black brothers and sisters. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I I always say I'm going to keep this under 30 minutes, but it has been so hard. These conversations are so important and, and so helpful to people. I want to ask you one more question. Um, so of all the the black women you've been working with, what have been the common themes in your conversations that challenges that these women have have faced and then what's what do you tell them i think um imposter syndrome tends to be a, a recurrent theme what is that um, imposter syndrome so um a lot of women of color that i work with um black women that i've worked with have struggled with the idea that they're not good enough to be in the space that they're in. And even though they are brilliant enough to get to a point where they can open up their own shop and do everything, it's still this feeling of, oh, I'm not good enough to be here. And so I really try to, to challenge that mentality um, by encouraging um, my colleagues, um, my fellow colleagues in business to, to play out the tape and um, I try to empower them by looking at the spaces where they're networking and try to reframe their approach to generating business with a focus on authenticity. And I believe that, you know, if you can be honest with who you are and be willing to be open to the fact that who you are is the, is the business. You know, for mon many of us, um, when we market our businesses, we are the product. You know, as a, as a lawyer, if you're a consultant, you're the product. And so um, I think I encourage women to take off the mask. You know, stop trying to be a different person at home and a different person at work. Be yourself all the time. And I think when you let that authenticity in, that's what makes it great because these, these business owners, they all teach me something, right? Every single business owner that I work with they teach me something and they're inspiring and they're strong. They just need that, that boost of confidence to know that they are enough and they are supposed to be where they are. And so, um, and they're resilient, but I just push them to, to take it up a notch and be a little cocky, you know, have that <laughs> swagger, like believe in, believe in what you're doing. I mean, some of these businesses are just making such incredible things and giving such gifts to our world embrace that what would a man do they would brag about it brag about it you know if, if you need to make a splash make a splash you know i like to say you know embrace your freak flag like whatever that case may be and and if someone doesn't like it or if you lose a client because you're being yourself that's their loss wow that's you know that is interesting that you that you say that because it seems like the stereotype of black women is that we walk around with this attitude, like, you know, we're unapproachable, we're angry, we, we, we think that we're all this. So that's interesting, you would say, because you're having more of a person, you're actually getting into them and having real conversation to get to know who they are and what their challenges and struggles are to know, oh, there's some a little bit of insecure, like anybody else, there's some insecurity there some some confidence but yeah i would say you know when we go out yeah we we have to give ourselves that pep talk because we know we are coming up against a monster daily <laughs> daily so 
um, that speaks volumes to you because you're taking the time to get into who they are individually, what their struggles, their challenges are, not just, let me help you get this business set up. That's, you're taking I, I would, time. <laughs> it's a privilege for me, honestly. Every time I get to work with a new business owner, um, a black businesswoman, I just, it's a privilege to be a part of their story, you know, to be a part of their formation story um, and to help them grow. You know, in my mind, if every other business was owned by a person of color, the world would be a better place. <laughs> <I like that. laughs> we do add some flavor to this world. Definitely. <laughs> All right, Pretty. I don't want to take up more of your, your time, but thank you so much for coming on. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll be sure to put your information in the description so people can reach out. And uh, let's get you some, some Black entrepreneurs, you know, yes. out. I know it's, it's a lot of us out here, a lot of us, a lot of us out here. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Malika. And thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. And um, I, I look forward to seeing how we can help um, support all the black owned businesses that we can. And thank right. you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. That was pretty Namani. Gosh, I um, I love, I love that conversation because she is going deep under the surface to actually deal with her clients, not just let me get you set up for a business and send you on your way. She's understanding what a black entrepreneur, especially a black woman is up against. We're double, we're women and we're black. What we're up against daily. And um, yeah, I don't think people, I think people are just now starting to wake up to realize what the black community faces every day every day so i appreciate her her mission her work and this is awesome so you all be sure to stay tuned i'm probably going to have her back on most definitely <laughs> and um if you know of a black entrepreneur if you're a black entrepreneur definitely reach out to her and um yeah let's get some things moving you all economics let's get it moving that's what that's what it's all about at the end that money, that money talks, I tell you. All right, you all be safe, stay aware, stay conscious. Uh, COVID-19, again, people remember, wear your mask when you're out, keep your hands clean, try your best, especially out at these protests, to keep your six feet distance. I know it's a challenge, but do your best. If you are out at a protest, come home, take a shower right away, take your shoes off, do not try COVID-19 into your house. And with everything going on, I know we hate listening to Trump. God knows it's consuming and it's insanity, but you gotta pay attention to what this man is saying because one day you may, might step outside your house and you weren't supposed to be outside and God only knows what orders he done put out there. So just stay aware, stay engaged, stay conscious. Okay, thank you for supporting Evanston Live TV. Stay tuned for more incredible people doing incredible things.